Hello Warriors. Happy New Year. Um, this has been a bit of a long time coming and I do apologise. Um, but I've worked over 450 hours in January. It's been absolutely brutal. Um, so I did try to come and do a vlog a couple of times. I've had so many migraines, it wasn't possible. So I just want to say Happy New Year to you all. And I hope you're all kind of hanging in there. Um, as we're all doing, I think. I think uh, we all go through the same uh, motions. Um, so not a lot really have happened with me since I last saw you. I have made a conscious effort over the last six plus months, I would say, to make notes in my phone daily if I'm not well and the symptoms I'm having so I can kind of get an understanding of what I'm doing and what my body is doing and how it's reacting. So what I've established is, first and foremost, if I'm truthful, I live every day in survival mode. That's the one thing that I've had to acknowledge because it is true. I, every day I live in survival mode. So every day I feel like I'm one moment from having a complete meltdown. I, the, the, I never have that full feeling inside myself and I haven't had that for probably seven years. Um, I think sometimes you find it easier to deal with, but I, every day, I wake up and I'm in survival mode every single day. Even if it's a day and I wake up and I'm having a bit of a good day to start, I'm still waiting, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for the moment, I'm waiting for something to happen and it's really bad, but unfortunately, it's the anxiety and, and everything that kind of goes with what we're going through. So I've been monitoring my, um, just my well-being really and my body and how it reacts at different times of the month and what it does. So this is what I found. I found that I have one week of a month where I have less migraines. Um, my anxiety levels are lower, I would say three, four. Um, but those weeks, the weird things happen to me. So my legs do this funny thing, like well, I'm going to walk and it's gonna, they're going to give way. So I get up and I have to sit down and they do this funny thing. And my eyes do this funny thing. So, the weeks that I don't have the migraines, we have that instead. So that's the payoff. Um, the last couple of months, the migraines have been brutal for me, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've had many days where I've had three, three a day, if not four. Um, sometimes they've gone, sometimes they've wiped out a day for me. It's been um, tough, if I'm honest. I, I deal with it better, but it's really tough, I think, because they were so bad before and then they reduce when they... When I have moments where they're, they're particularly bad again, um, I don't cope very well with that no more because it's bizarre. The more the migraines were happening, it was, you were used to it. I was used to the pain of it. I was used to the lack of vision. I was used to my life. Um, and then when my life got better, it's really tough when I have bad weeks of it. And I did, I've had, I've probably had two months um, where they've been particularly bad. Um, and I have to say, I've had more periods than a high school prom. Like, I don't even know what's going on. I think every two weeks or three weeks I've had a period of sort and they're not being cute periods. Um, but yeah, so it's all been a little bit chaotic, but I mean, this is the menopause and this is what, unfortunately, um, we've been living with for a number and number and number of years. So I have, as I was saying, I have one week where I'm okay. Um, anxiety levels are lower, the things happen. Um, I have two to three weeks then where I have migraines, my anxiety goes off the Richter, um, sometimes I struggle to function. Uh, it, it kind of overwhelms you actually, the anxiety side of things completely overwhelms you. Um, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about my treatment just because of the way I started taking it. So like a lot of you, um, I'm on the body identical treatment. So we have the estrogel, um, which I take every day. I take usually two pumps of this a day. Um, during my time that I'm taking these little nuggets of joy, I usually have three pumps of this because I feel like I need it. Now, this is what I'm going to speak to you about because um, even the research before I started taking these, I know, I know that the anxiety is... Um, one of the side effects of these, but anxiety is with anything that you, you're taking with the menopause. So unfortunately, there's not a lot you can do. So, but what I find with these, these make me ill. Oh my days, I start taking these. 
we have to say 12 days. My anxiety is, you know, I can be almost physically sick where I struggle to even catch my breath. I have panic attacks. My palpitations get worse. Um, I'm lying in bed and I think my heart's going to beat out my chest. It's, and then, obviously, because that happens, the anxiety comes. So what I've found with these now is I've tried everything. I've tried inserting them because they're supposed to, it's supposed to give you less reactions. It didn't work for me. Um, I've tried taking them at different times of the day. Now, I take these now literally as I'm going to bed in the night. If I take one in the morning, I'll have a migraine within two hours. So now, literally, as I'm going to sleep, they're my before bed tablets because whatever symptoms I have with them, the worst of it can happen when I go to sleep. But I do it as I'm going to sleep because otherwise, if I take it and I'm not just going to sleep, the anxiety will be um, increased, but ma you know, massively increased. So I've started doing that. Now, the other thing I want to say is this is on prescription. This Androfem, it is on prescription. Is that upside down? Yes. It's on prescription. Now, this is female testosterone, and it actually drives me insane that we have to pay for this to have this privately as women, because ultimately, I do not believe any man is paying privately for testosterone um, that they need to function on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so even when I'm having my bad days, I genuinely, honestly think that this is what helps me through the day. This gives me my drive, this stops me being... Um, so tired and lethargic, it gives me a bit of get up and go, even though I'm, I will still have the anxiety and I can still have those feelings and I can still be in my kitchen crying, this makes me move and do things. Um, it's also given me my sex life back, genuinely, because for a number of years, I just had no real interest in that whatsoever. So it has really brought that back for me um, as well. And it infuriates me that we have to pay for it privately. But this tube lasts me a year. Um, I believe it was £125 and it lasts me a year. So if you equate that to over, you know, the weeks that we're using it, it's just over a pound a week. Now, for me, it's worth it. I just think the amount of that, that I get from this, it is worth it for me. I worked it, I calculated it the other week actually on how much it was because I did a, a report. But it's, it's not a lot of money when you calculate it a week. It's just it's a lot of money to buy up front. But I just think this is life changing. And I'm hoping with all the work that Carolyn Harris is doing at the moment with Parliament for us, that slowly but surely these kinds of things will be free for us on the NHS. I think that, you know, I hear about how people struggle to get this body identical treatment because the doctors have no idea about what the best tr treatment is for the menopause. And people are arguing with their GPs and they're given a load of uh, other drugs, which are no good for them, rather than giving them these drugs. And it's just a constant battle, I think, for us women. And we don't want that. We want people who are specialists. We want people to say, actually, this is what's going on. Um, and I do... It's bizarre, you know, I'm seven years in that I've been feeling really bad. The last three, four years, it's been awful. Um, and I'm just not even 50% of the person that I was. I very rarely drive now. My husband drives me mostly everywhere. We, we call it driving with Sammy days. Um, and because I don't drive now, my anxiety with driving is really bad. I don't like driving now because I haven't driven a lot. So I've gone from doing 20, 30,000 miles a year to less than 2,000 miles a year. Um, I drive from here to my Cairo once a week, which is less than a mile away. So I don't really drive now. And when I have to drive, it kind of makes me um, feel anxious because I don't do a lot of it. Whereas before it was all second nature. I think it's all these kinds of things um, that add to our menopause experience um, across the board. Um, and I'm, the other thing I'm going to say today, which I'm going to leave you with for now, because I will check in now because I'm back off work and... My anxiety's up to the Richter's. My first day home today, we're on my own with no work. And it's only half past 11 and I'm pulling my hair out. Um, my anxiety's really put bad and it's, you know, it's, it's not a pretty place to be. But I'm going to leave you with this, ladies, at the end. I just want to say, um, what I found out over the last year was, what's the difference between a period and the menopause? Women talk about periods. It blows my mind still that we live in a society where 
so many women uh, being honest about how we're feeling and, and about how we're struggling to cope and how it's changed our lives. Yet, women still will not talk about it with each other. Um, they'll talk about periods. Um, quite often people will speak about if they've had a heavy period or if they're on their period, but not the menopause. I just think, ladies, we have to, have to, have to start having these awkward, horrible, uncomfortable conversations with each other. We have to. Um, and not just with each other, with the people who are around us in our lives, our husbands, our kids. I think half the problem that has been going on for so long is there's no education. People have no idea what the symptoms are and what the reality of the menopause is. And like I've said before, years ago, they'd lock us women up. Um, and, you know, and I've said this, there's days when I think that I'm going loopy. Do you know what? In the last month alone, my husband must think I've lost the plot. I've tried to put a file in my microwave. I've tried to put milk in my microwave. I went to put washing clothes in the bin instead of the washing basket. The kind of things that I do where all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, this don't, this milk won't fit in the microwave because clearly it doesn't live there. And it's just, you, there's moments where you think you were just losing your mind. Um, and I just think the only way for us to get better treatments and to get a better understanding of what is going on so long term, A, I don't want to be feeling like this in 10 years time. I want that to be, ed I want that to be research. I want it to be development. I want people to be talking about it. I want more products to be out there. I want more options for us. I think that that's the only way we're all going to get better. And as I keep saying, we are more than 50% of the population. I don't understand why the government and the health authorities and everybody who is surrounding this situation, employers, want to get up, step on board for us. Because as I said to you, you know, if I did not work for myself, there would probably be a couple of years that I couldn't have even got into work. And I still have days like it now. I have days when my anxiety is so bad that I couldn't even function and get in a car to drive. So they are missing out on us, on our expertise. And we're amazing people. We're, us women have the knowledge and we're in a better place in our lives. It's just we need a little bit of support at the moment because what's going on, this hormonal change is going on, that we cannot control, we are having no real help with. Um, so I'm just hoping, I'm starting this year having a bit of a moan about it, but I really hope that at the end of this year I will be doing a vlog saying, well, ladies, this have changed this year and it'll be remarkable. So I'd like to hope that that will be there for us. Um... And like I said, we just got to keep talking. We just got to keep talking. If you're having a bad time, tell your friends, because your friends is probably having a bad time as well, and they'll feel better for, for you telling her that. Um, and I think we got to be more patient. You know, I see this lady in the supermarket in front of me, and she just looks grumpy. And we've all done it and gone, oh, God, she looks a bit grumpy. Now, that's me. That's me. I might just be having a really bad anxiety day, and it's not I'm grumpy. It's just that I can't function, and just getting in a shop is effort. And I think we just need to be um, more empathetic and more aware of what goes on for a, for a huge chunk of us, of this population. So, on that note, um, I hope you're all keeping well. We're all going through the same process, all in varying degrees. Um, I will check in with you. I promise I will check in with you. Um, because I am going to be looking for something to do as well now. Because... It's too early to do gardening. So I can't even do gardening to keep my mind going at the moment. I'm going to go power wash my garden this afternoon. That's, that shows how desperate I am to do something. I'm power washing my garden. I need to get a grip. So um, I will check in with you this week or in a week. Um, there's lots I want to tell you and lots of things that have been going on with my anxiety, my swallowing and things. So I'll speak to you that as I go. And I just want to say, um, please, please be kind to yourself as I keep saying to you. When we're going through this, we've got to put ourselves first. So be kind to yourself. You've got to love yourself. Um, and you've just got to do what's right for you. So while you're going through this, just do what's right for you. Be selfish for the first time in your life. So on that note, warriors, I will love you and leave you today. And I will check in with you in the week. Um, take care. Peace out.